So we have already discussed the two important numbers for continuous review with dynamic demand. Uh, one is the quantity to order every time we pick up the phone and order from our supplier. And the other one is the reorder point. So for quantity to order, we were saying that um, the quantity to order is best fixed at square root of 2ds over h following the EOQ formula and the reorder point when to order is best fixed at uh, the inverse CDF of the demand during lead time. Right? So the most general form is the inverse CDF of the demand of the uh, distribution of demand during lead time DL. Yeah? And if demand during lead time is to follow normal distribution, then we say that is going to be um, demand during lead time, average of it, plus the Z value times the sigma of demand during lead time. So that basically is the formula and what we want to do from here is to um, understand the reorder point formula a little bit more all right, in terms of its components. So we have demand during lead time if the demand, so the demand example fluctuates uh, like normally distributed uh, distribution with a mean of dl bar and a standard deviation of sigma dl squared, written as squared. So we'll have this. All right. And uh, just for the sake of um, calculations, earlier on we were saying that um, L equals to 3 and DL was basically uh, 60 square root of 3 uh, times 8 squared. Right, so where we say D follows normal distribution with a mean of 20 standard deviation of so that's for one day demand this is for three days demand and if that's the case then we have this and we like to say that r is this mark here where it gives us i think i gave too much allowance uh, but it gives us two percent of probability of being stock out so probability in normal distribution is the area so we have this the area that re reflects the demand during the time being larger than more than what we have in our reorder as our reorder point uh, is going to be the area on top which will add up to no more than two percent therefore it also means that our our service level is 98 percent all right all this area here and that's our service level. So service level uh, represents the probability, remember, the probability of having stock to sell. Having stock to sell in this picture simply means that uh, after we make the order, that is once the our inventory level drops below the reorder point, the demand during the lead time for the order to come by will be less than our R. You see that? Yeah, so it will be less than our R. So if this happens 98 times out of 100 inventory cycles, then that basically is reflecting a uh, probability of 98%, which is what is happening here. So uh, in one particular cycle, inventory cycle, triangle, demand could be here. Oops, below less, uh, less than R, no problem. We still have inventory. So we have met demand during the lead time for that cycle. Another inventory cycle, it was here more than the average demand but still lesser than our reorder point so we have met demand another cycle it was here 
a little bit higher than our reorder point. Uh, obviously, we couldn't have supplied, fulfilled that part of the demand that was exceeding R. Yeah, uh, so we could fulfill all the demand up to R, but uh, for the last few customers who come in to buy the tires, we were unable to sell to them. Right, so it's not like we can't sell to all customers for that inventory cycle. That could be two weeks, three weeks. Right, we have been selling and selling and clearing out our R. And uh, I'm sorry. So during the three days lead time, the first day we were selling to customer. Second day we were selling to customer. Third day morning we were selling to customer. But afternoon came an order that was large. Unfortunately, we cannot meet the demand. Right. So in that sense, we are missing out. The, the actual demand because we can record what the customer really wants uh, but unable to fulfill so we could record the actual demand that was uh, that was that has arrived to our shop so we can say that the demand would have been here but the difference between that actual demand and our uh, inventory which is our reorder point uh, was not able to be fulfilled right now no matter whether the demand was very large or very little just exceeding our reorder point those are the parts that we cannot fulfill. So, so that chance is going to total up to 2%. That's what it means. So what is interesting is uh, perhaps this part. Okay, This is the part that we call, uh, first of all, formula-wise, it's Z times sigma dl because clearly R is made up of dl the mean demand during lead time plus z times sigma dl that gets us to r okay now this term has got a name it's called the safety stock safety stock okay if we reorder at dl bar the average demand during lead time then that would mean that our service level is 50%. Half the time we have uh, items to sell, half the time we don't have items to sell. All right. So the DL bar is called the cycle stock. Okay, And the two are not just different in names. The cycle stock will be that part of the inventory. So we have R, right? Let's say 60 tires. Uh, no, 88 tires. Uh, 60 tire is our mean inventory level, mean inventory, uh, uh, mean demand during lead time. So we have 88 tires. Our reorder point was 88. Uh, the mean demand during lead time is going to be 60 tires. So in other words, out of the 88 tires, the 60 tires, I'm going to explain to my boss that the 60 tires are there because that's to meet cycle stock. Right. Uh, meant for sale. All right, we have that portion in our inventory for the total of uh, reorder point number of tires because we know that on average we can sell them. So, okay, so that's meant for sale. And the boss asks, then what, up, what happens to the remaining 28 tires? Uh, because you have 88 here, right? Oh, uh, that 28 tires is what we call safety stock and is not meant for sale. Not intended for sale. Then why do you keep it there? We keep it there because for safety purposes. Safety against what? Not against fire or theft, but against stock out. Okay, against stock out. So, had we been ordering stocks Average stocks, mind you, right? Average amount of stocks meant for sale. Meant for sale. That means our R was here. So that when the boss comes in and says, why are all these 60 tires here? Oh, because the cycle stock is 60. The demand on average is 60. So we uh, bought, we have 60 for sale during the lead time. But if that's the case, it means half the time we run out of stock during the lead time. And that's bad because there's 50% service level only. So what do we do? we increase the quantity that we have while in lead time. In other words, we purchase earlier while we still have more stocks than the average demand 
required. So we know that 60 is the required average. We reorder at 88, the reorder point that gives us a service level of 98%. So what that means is this 28 tires will save us from running out of stock. We can think of this safety stock as, as a kind of a cushion, all right? Where normally we would have an inventory cycle like this. All right. All right, we have many, many inventory cycles. If we set our reorder point okay, uh, to be too low, then it can be that we run out of stock here, stock out here, stock out here. And no stock out here, no stock out here, nearly uh, no stock out here, right? So we have two stock outs, we have two stock outs. But if we have safety stock, so this is no safety stock, zero level. But if we have safety stock, then our zero level with safety stock, right? Our zero level will be lower, or rather, in other words, uh, on average, we have higher average inventory uh, in our warehouse. Yeah. So if that's the case, then that means we hold most of the time. If this is one year, that means we have this height, which is our safety stock quantity or average quantity that we hold in our piggy bank, we hold in that part of the, the warehouse, that we don't really intend to sell to meet demand, but occasionally, uh, because demand is probabilistic, sometimes it is jutting out a bit higher a bit, good for us, but provided we have stock to sell, right? So we dig into our little piggy bank, the safety stock, borrow from ourselves a little bit, and then uh, after that half a day or so, the next morning, delivery arrives and then we refill our pig, our piggy bank first and the leftover will be our uh, inventory to meet cycle demand okay now why can't we order more uh, because of course here in our scenario there's no express delivery which charges us a lot more in terms of express delivery and uh, delivery, any delivery will incur another lead time. So there's, it's not much point to say that, oh, we need more stock. Let's make another small order. That, that cannot be. So we have to borrow from something somewhere that is immediately available. And that is our own little piggy bank of safety stock. So, so in real life, it works as a piggy bank. We borrow from ourselves and we top up right away the moment uh, the next shipment arrives. Uh, mathematically, it is calculated as Z times Sigma DL. And that also helps us to determine how much cost are we incurring in holding the safety stock. Because there is a cost to having such luxury as a piggy bank. Because if you have a piggy bank, you are also worried that it might be stolen, all right, uh, and the piggy bank might be broken if you don't put it nicely. So you have a little storage area and that takes up space and that's holding cost for safety stock in general. How much is the safety stock and how much is our inventory cost? And that's the part that we want to talk about uh, in the next segment.